Nestling in its own vale in the North Walian county of Denbyshire lies a town with its own railways, both big and small. Today's postcard is from Llangollen in Denbyshire. You know, I'm not an anorak when it comes to railways, but there's something so nostalgic about those posters there, those British Railways movies yeah. that they used to put out, this station in brown and cream. Yeah. It, 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 there is just something so brief encounter, so terribly British about this place, Colin. And you've got here in Llangothen a, a very authentic place, haven't you? We have. It's an um, original station designed and built in 1865 for this railway. And it was abandoned when British Rail closed the line in the mid-1960s. We inherited it virtually in, in derelict condition and have rebuilt it pretty much to its um, former glories. We are uh, looking forward to getting um, a grant from the National Heritage Memorial Fund of uh, about £300,000 so we can do the essential repairs on the fabric of the building and uh, get into A1 condition. Was it left entirely intact after Dr Beechin had his uh, purge? Oh no, not at all. Everything was stripped out that could be taken away. The, the track went, the signals went, obviously all the rolling stock went and the, and the buildings were vandalised. So we've had to put everything back from scratch. When did you actually start up again? In about 1975. So it's, it's 21, 22 years now that uh, since those first beginnings with 30 foot of track, we now run 8 miles and we've got a very substantial operation here. So what part of Dimbisha do you actually cover on rail? Um, we're in the south east corner of the county. We're very close to the border with Wrexham uh, and uh, also with England and we're surprisingly accessible by road now these days and people th think of Slangothan as being right you know in, in the heart of Wales but in fact we're very close to the border. Yeah and you uh, actually is this one of the terminus here? Well this is the terminus now but uh, originally it used to be a through station the tracks used to vanish under the bridge and go five miles up towards Rueaven where they're connected with the main line from Chester down to Shrewsbury. And what about that way? Well, it used to go uh, right the way through via Corwin, Bala, Dolgeth, lie down to the coast at Barmouth and linked up with the Cambrian system. So it was uh, one of the main cross-country routes. So it went up to Merionis? Yes. Well, this does remind me of the old steam trains in West Ryslip going up to Aylesbury, those trains would, and you pull those down, you, and you'd always look for the compartment on your own, wouldn't you? Indeed. So no one else was there. How do you actually run this whole line, though, Colin, the Langothlin line? Well, it started off being an entirely volunteer operation. It was basically a sort of an overgrown boys club when it first started. Um, not mean that in a derogatory sense, but that was the motivation behind it. But rapidly, as the thing physically took shape, it demanded more and more looking after. Uh, once they started going to seven days a week running, uh, the demands on people's spare time grew excessive. So the first few full-time staff were employed, and we've now got uh, a core of about a dozen full-time and a dozen part-time staff. Um, we've got about 180 working volunteers out of a membership of about 1,400. We feel we make a major contribution to the economy of the local area. Um, because we tend to draw a lot of our supplies, uh, catering supplies, building materials, subcontractors, etc., from locally owned businesses in this area. And we tend to spend about £100,000 a year with locally owned businesses within a 10 mile radius. And how much did it cost to run? Well, running a railway is a bit of an act of faith. I mean, you set up a timetable for the following year, and we set out to spend, shall we say, over half a million pounds. And then we hope enough people come back and enjoy themselves to pay, sufficiently pay the bills and give us a little bit extra, which we can reinvest in, um, you know, progressing the aims further. You've got three main liabilities or responsibilities, call it what you want. You've got the station itself, you've got the rolling stock, and then you've got the trains, presumably. Well, yes, they all take a, a lot of looking after in different ways. I mean, you can see the, the fabric of this station has, has had a minimal amount of maintenance over the last 50 years, which is why we're setting out a, a major refurbishment programme. You've got the other civil engineering structures on the line. We've got a big viaduct and a tunnel and um, various other sort of retaining walls and things. You've got the rolling stock itself, which, again, we've got a dedicated team of both paid staff and volunteers that look after it. And then you've got the steam locomotives. Mm. And they are every bit as individualistic and temperamental as, 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 uh, the, uh, as they're made out to be. Prima donnas. Absolutely. And, and they can you, be. And, and just look at that uh, footbridge. Look at the canopy there. Look at how delicate that is with the, you know, with the, uh, what, what I would call the sort of that zigzag Yes, the barge and the holes on the end. And, and all of that. I mean, it, it is so classy. Well, it, it, it's representative of an era where things were not just functional. 
uh, a great deal of care and deal of pride went into the design and the manufacture and the implementation of things and you can see this throughout uh, many, many examples, not just on this railway, but also in other buildings of the period. And it's something that's carried through into the care that was lavished on the locomotives themselves. A little bit of decoration here and there. And I think it instilled pride in those that had to operate them and look after them as well. Flan Guthland, surely the, the, the town of railways. Yes. It's Big and small. Yes, both gauges, both sizes. You can go down to the railway to the full-size steam train. You've just been there and you have beautiful drives up and down the valley and if you want the opposite here we've got every single type of train you can imagine in different gauges from N gauge to gauge one all models all types from all over the world every type of we've about 80,000 locomotives on view here 22 I'm, to, uh, I'm just about to press this little red button down here and that will set everything operating again so how many tracks do you have here in the town uh, the main tracks in the, the full-size railways, there's, there's a single line that runs for nine miles. And then in this exhibition centre, we've got 22 model layouts, uh, seven of which the children or adults or the bigger children can play with. Uh, they can be operated as well. Plus all the other layouts work from push button for people to come along and operate them. They'll run for three or four minutes per, per push. Now, as a kid, I remember one very famous name, Hornby. They don't operate anymore, do they? Yes, they do. They, oh, they're they down do. in Margate. Uh, they've got a long, long checkered career. They started off making metal trains and the original Hornby Dublo section is in the other room now, their factory. They sold up, uh, were bought by Triang in 1965 from Liverpool and they moved the metal train side to Basildon. In Essex? 